Last year, I made this video suggesting that always charging your battery overnight with cheap energy, even if it was going to be sunny the next day, might be a better option for you both financially and environmentally. In the comments, though, quite a few people suggested that I might have got this wrong. Uh oh. Hi there, I'm Gary, and welcome back to my channel, Gary Does Solar. Here's the video in question, and I've put a link to it in the description. It's definitely worth a watch to set the scene, but to summarise, I concluded that if your energy tariff offers cheaper off peak rates overnight, and you get a decent export rate, then fully charging your home battery overnight, every night, all year round, even if it was going to be sunny the next day, would provide the following benefits. Number one, it's very easy to set up your system to do this. No fiddling around with costly automated management systems that monitor weather forecasts and things like that. You just program your battery once and it's done. No hassle and no stress. I'm on Octopus Energy's Intelligent Octopus Go tariff in the UK, which has a six hour off peak rate from 11.30 p.m. to 5.30 a.m. So I simply enter these times into the app. Number two, it's not always sunny. And not only that, weather forecasts are often wrong. Sunny predictions can turn to rain without warning, so by always charging your battery overnight, you'll always be able to cover your home usage the next day, no matter what the weather is going to be. Here you can see where the forecast for a sunny day was wrong. The battery wasn't charged overnight, relying on that expected sunshine, and it just didn't materialise, and so the home had to pay for grid import instead. Not good. Number three. Charging your battery overnight when national demand is low helps stabilise the grid, reducing strain and improving sustainability. You can see this in action here with a typical demand curve for a country. By charging your battery overnight, you're helping flatten that curve. And number four, not only that, a fully charged battery before the sun comes up means you'll be exporting more solar energy to the grid, and that reduces your country's reliance on fossil fuel generation. Here's the level of export that you can achieve once your battery is charged with solar generation. And here's the increased export if your battery is already fully charged before the sun comes up. Number five, even though you're paying extra to charge your battery overnight, the resulting extra export means you're not losing out financially. And actually, in many cases, it's more profitable. In the example we just looked at, you can see the increased revenue if we charge overnight. It's worth mentioning that in my previous video, I modelled the Octopus Go tariff from Octopus Energy. And at the time, the export rate for that tariff was 8 pence. And almost the very next day, Octopus Energy increased that rate to 15 pence, making the tariff even better. By the way, if you're on that tariff, that change might not be automatic though. You'll have to contact Octopus Energy and request it manually. Now, even though I'm a big fan of Octopus, their Octopus Go and Intelligent Octopus Go tariffs, which give the greatest savings here, are designed for EV owners. And as such, Octopus Energy requires you to own an electric vehicle to access these tariffs. It's such a shame because those with just solar and battery are missing out. I note, though, that another UK energy provider, Eon, offers a similar tariff called Eon NextDrive. And the great thing about that tariff is that you don't need to have an EV. If we model this Eon tariff with my solar asthma modelling utility, you can see the tariff set up here. With a 5 kilowatt south facing array near Oxford in the UK, a 5 kilowatt inverter and a Tesla Powerwall 3, you can see that by charging your home battery overnight, you can increase your daily revenue. And even more, if you discharge some of your battery in the early evening. Pretty good. Now, I won't be switching away from Octopus Energy myself, though, for the reasons that I state at the end of this video here. Again, the link is in the description below. Not least, I'm expecting Octopus to improve their tariffs for solar and battery owners over time to beat the offerings in the market. All right then, back to the list of benefits. There's one additional benefit that I forgot to mention last time, and actually it's a very important benefit for some people. Number six. If you have EPS, emergency power supply, it's only effective if you have sufficient charge in your battery at the time of the power cut. By charging your battery every night, you'll have a higher state of charge for longer during the day, ensuring that you're always prepared. Here's the battery state of charge through the day if you don't charge overnight. You can see that there's a prolonged period where if you were to experience a power outage, 
you won't have sufficient battery to get you through the rest of the day. And here's what the chart looks like if you do charge your battery overnight. That's much better. So there are plenty of benefits if you charge your home battery overnight, environmentally, financially, and also with energy security. But I had many comments to my original video saying that if you had an oversized array, you were actually better not to charge your battery overnight so as to avoid the clipping during the day. So what does that actually mean? Was I wrong in my conclusions? Okay, the first thing we need to understand then is what does array oversizing actually mean? I cover the topic of oversizing extensively in this video here, and if you'd like to watch it, again, the link is in the description. But in summary, it simply means having a solar array that is larger than your inverter size. Let's model an 8 kilowatt peak south facing solar array in the UK paired with a 5 kilowatt inverter together with a Powerwall 3 home battery, all operating on the Intelligent Octopus Go tariff. You can see that I've adjusted the energy usage so that it's flat until early afternoon. That way we can see the effects of what we're about to do. Looking at the solar generation chart, with this setup, on a sunny day in June, your array will be clipped. Essentially, although the solar array itself is able to generate around 62 kilowatt hours throughout the day, because of the inverter limit, you'll lose around 12 kilowatt hours of that, or around 19%. This clipping of the generation is what the commenters of my previous video said could be exploited if the battery was not fully charged overnight. So why is that then? Well, it's all to do with whether your battery is DC coupled and whether your inverter allows the battery to be charged with excess solar above the inverter limit. This diagram will help me explain. A solar inverter has both a DC side and an AC side. If you're not familiar with DC and AC voltages, don't worry. This video here will explain everything and I've put a link to it in the description. Our 8 kilowatt peak solar array is wired into the DC side and all of the home appliances are wired into the AC side. The thing is, the inverter cannot convert all of that 8 kilowatts of DC power into AC because of a 5 kilowatt AC inverter limit. So normally, 3 kilowatts of that solar generation will be clipped. But if we have a home battery connected to the inverter on the DC side, which is referred to as a DC coupled battery, and the battery is not fully charged, and the inverter supports the feature, then it can actually charge the battery with that additional 3 kilowatts of DC power. Of course, when the battery becomes full, then any solar generation above the inverter limit is clipped once more. So this is the basis of the comments I received then. If you have an oversized array with a DC coupled battery and a suitable inverter, don't charge your battery overnight and instead make use of the solar generation that would have otherwise been clipped. In our modeling example here, there is almost 12 kilowatt hours of clipped energy, which if it could be put into the battery and later exported, is worth nearly £1.80 all by itself. But herein lies the problem. It's way more difficult than you might think to manage that. Let me show you how by using some manual configuration. By checking this setting here, we're enabling the inverter to charge the battery with solar power above the inverter AC limit. You can see that we now eat into the clipped region, but only by a little bit. That's because the battery was already nearly full when we started clipping, and so it only took a small amount of that extra power available to fill it meaning clipping would start again. So how to stop the battery from getting full too early? Let's try pausing the battery between 8 and 9 a.m. We can do this by setting the battery to force discharge during that time, but at a zero discharge rate. And you can see that by doing this, we've now eaten into the clipped region a bit more, but it's only added a few pence to the overall income. OK, let's try a different tactic then and slow down the charge rate of the battery. It's currently at 5 kilowatts, but watch what happened when I slowly reduce it to 1 kilowatt. It looks a little random because of all of the system interactions, but we're increasingly eroding that clipped region, which has also resulted in the overall income for the day increasing markedly. The optimum charge rate that I found was 0.8 kilowatts, which added 70 pence to the overall income. Not bad at all. Of course, attempting to manage this kind of thing manually day in, day out is wholly impractical. The only effective solution is an automated approach. And I believe a technology like Predbat is ideal for optimizing this kind of solar and battery management. 
If you're not familiar with Predbat, check out the link in the description to a video I made with its creator, Trevor Southwell. It's well worth a watch. So, was I wrong then? Well, aside from the fact that you have to have a decent enough oversizing of your array, a DC coupled battery, and an inverter that supports that DC charging capability, you're wholly dependent on your automation software getting the weather forecast correct every day. And given climates are generally warming around the world, resulting in increasingly unpredictable weather patterns, I'm a little sceptical on how effective that automation can be. Perhaps I'm being overly sceptical. Please let me know in the comments if you've successfully used Predbat or other methods to manage clipping. Your experience could really help out others. Now, of course, the benefits of reducing the clipping can only be had if there is clipping. It won't be sunny every day, especially in locations like the UK, and therefore there'll be no clipping. And even if it is sunny, it won't be June every month. So again, no clipping. And that means that over the whole year, whatever percentage gain you achieve will average out to something much lower. So I have to ask, is it really worth it? And how long would it take you to recover the cost of your automation solution? And finally, and probably the most damning reason, is that if you have EPS, look again at the battery state of charge during the day when the automation is working well. If you have a power outage anywhere between midnight and 11 a.m., you can see that your battery state of charge will be too low to sustain you for any time at all. So, all things considered, I'm going to stand by my original video and say that aside from highly particular edge cases, if you have a decent export rate with your smart tariff, you should always charge your home battery overnight, every night, regardless of next day's weather. And that way you'll achieve the best financial, environmental and security outcomes. Okay, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to try out the modeling utility yourself, all you have to do is sign up to my Patreon here. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters, including these here on the terawatt and gigawatt tiers. Your support is allowing me to do quite a bit of solo this year, pushing forward a number of initiatives that hopefully help a lot of people right across the world. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all soon.